Here we find a collection of Apple Silicon Macs. Look at that. Very nice. Almost as nice as the new embroidered Luke Miani button-down shirt that comes in a variety of colors. The way I see it, there are only two problems. Number one, compatibility. Some programs either don't work on Apple Silicon or Mac OS or aren't very well optimized. And number two, is Apple's extremely expensive upgrade prices. On the M1 over here, it costs $200 to get an additional eight gigabytes of RAM. And on the M1 Pro Max and Ultra, you can bump that up to $400 minimum to add more RAM. And so that got me thinking, could we solve both problems at the same time? Can you build an entire x86 PC for less than it costs to upgrade the RAM in an Apple Silicon device. Well, today, that's exactly what we are gonna do. So, if you're looking forward to this one, make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below, and let's jump into it. Today's video is sponsored by Mine. Mine is helping people reclaim their digital footprint by showing them how many and which companies hold their data, deciding which should get to keep it and which don't, and even helping them get their data deleted. With data breaches occurring all the time, I need to make sure that I know who has my data. So I got started at SayMine.com, where upon signing in with my primary email, I discovered that a staggering 488 companies have data of some sort. After scrolling quite a bit, I was surprised to find a company that I've never heard of, only to find that they have information including my approximate location and address, or another company such as Eventbrite, which has a high risk of data breach and also holds financial information such as credit card info, as well as my precise location. With mine, I can easily reclaim my data in a matter of clicks, and requests are sent directly from my inbox. Sure enough, a few hours later, I got this email acknowledging my request. To check out mine, head over to the link in the description below or go to saymine.com today and you can own your data. And now let's get back to the video. So it's no secret that I am a big fan of Apple Silicon. The fact that you can get a $600 Mac mini that is more powerful than many desktop computers but consumes as much power as a tablet is absolutely breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. However, even on the most entry-level product here, Apple charges a fairly exorbitant $200 just to go from eight to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Just think what you could do with that $200. I mean, for one, you could raid the new Luke Miani merch store, or more practically, you could use that money and build an entire computer. And that was the idea that stuck in my head. So when Noah Rubin, my co-host from our podcast, Dark Mode, which we host here every Sunday, came to visit from California, we decided that the best thing we should do was go to Micro Center and build the cheapest brand new computer to see just how much you can get for less than $400. So after a trip to Micro Center, we laid out the parts that we'd chosen. So, so Apple you're... Silicon is here. So you wanna build a computer for less than it costs to buy a bunch of RAM. First up, Noah, here's what I have for you. It's an SSD and we paid zero dollars. Zero dollars? Zero dollars. I think because my thing was two cents, but then he took two pennies out of the cash register and then put them back in. Next up, we have my absolute favorite part of the build, a $16 power supply. Ooh, it's even called the basics. That's all you need. And powering our monstrous machine, we have the Intel Core i3. Um, 10105. Why is it five seemingly completely random numbers? What have you got for me now? This one rolls right off the tongue. The Asus Prime H510M-E. Ooh! Say that one five times fast. The Asus H1 Prime N. And how much was that? $80? $86. $86. Now, <laughs> hey, guess what? Hey, you know the company Dodge? 
Yeah. Do you know what kind of trucks they make? What? Ram. Eight gigabyte. Thirty-one dollars. Now we gotta put all this sh in something. So here's the key. <laughs> so this is the thermal take cool all cool all your life <laughs> mid tower V one hundred. And of course, it wouldn't be a PC if we didn't have RGB. And so there you have it. That's a computer. One, two, three. That's a PC. And there you go. Wouldn't you know? That's a computer, if you ask me. <laughs> oh my god, what are you doing? Okay, do you want to do the honors? Alright, let's see what we're working with. Oh, oh, look at this. What is this? What is this? Why? This is horrible. I don't like that. You know what? Honestly, I've seen worse. We've got a covered power supply shroud, which actually is really unfortunate because I really wanted to see the basics yeah. on full display. Alright, so let's see what 16... Oof. Oof. Wow, that's something. But you know what? <laughs> I have nothing, I have nothing, I was gonna defend it. There's no PCIe power, you cannot put a graphics card in this system. Okay, don't buy this. Let's look at the motherboard, shall we? Cause this one at least is like a legitimate product. Look at that, it's stripey. It's got a socket, we got two RAM slots, we got graphics, we got some I.O. We're gonna be using the, that HDMI because we don't have a graphics card, but don't worry about that. Core i3. Wow. This doesn't look like it could cool off a strip of bacon. That's a screamer. So now that we've got our CPU installed, it's time to move on to the next step of the installation, the a RAM, because we only have one. Um, that's all you need though. If you ask anyone, they'll tell you, single channel memory is good. <laughs> Dude, that's literally it. That's the entire computer. This looks ridiculous. Unpainted metal. I didn't like that at all. All right, so let's go ahead and install our absolute monster of a PC. Look at this. Are you ready for some magic? Watch this. <laughs> that did not look very magical. This is about 20% computer by volume and about 80% nothing. <laughs> okay, I think we need power supply now. Dude, it doesn't reach. Seriously? It actually legitimately does not reach. Like I'm stretching it as far as it'll go. <laughs> I think we need a different power supply. Okay, so it's the next day and as it turned out, the basics was, it was a little too basic. Yeah. So we got a new power supply for $35 and we should be good to go. So let's finish it up. All right. That looks a little bit silly, but you know, we did a good job. Like, look at this, the cables are managed. What few of them are actually necessary that has space for drive bays. That's a nice touch. Yeah, we should have gotten a, a floppy drive. I feel like that would fit this computer. So here we have it. This is our PC. It's almost unbelievably light and empty, but it's also really ugly. So I think we can handle that. I think that works. Oh my gosh, look where it ends. That's pretty perfect. I think our masterpiece is complete.
Now, you might be wondering just how cheap this system was. Well, we went through the parts list earlier, but the power supply had to get switched out because the $16 one literally just didn't reach. So, had to buy a new one for 35 bucks. And then I also got a $20 discount for bundling the CPU and the motherboard. And then I also had a Micro Center coupon for $10 off. So, that helped out and brought the total cost for this fully working computer to $256. That is ridiculously cheap. And I mean, I just, I don't know that you can build a new PC for less than this. Now, there is one thing I want to address and that is the configuration that Noah and I chose to go with. Our goal for this was to build the cheapest possible system, period, full stop. However, if you modified that and said, okay, I'd like to build the cheapest possible system that actually has a graphics card, that's an understandable modification. So what I would do in that case is buy this same exact Core i3, but without integrated graphics, and that'll save you 20 bucks, bringing the system down to 236, and that would leave you about $160 to spend on a graphics card if you wanted to stay under our price target of $400. Now, in terms of performance, obviously it's not fast, right? But for $250, you don't exactly expect it to be fast. So if we compare it to an M1 chip, in Cinebench here, we're getting just over 5,000 points compared to 7,700. Obviously, the M1 chip is going to be faster, in addition to being significantly more efficient and running fanlessly and silently. It's a, it, it's a better chip. But that's not the point. This is an x86 system, and my thinking here is, Obviously, this isn't an M1 replacement. I like to think of this as an addition. And the best part is, this thing costs the same as two and a half years of Parallels desktop. So, you could pay for that on a subscription model, or you could buy this and, theoretically, be getting pretty similar performance to an emulated Windows environment running on an M1 Mac Mini. A lot of people have this this like sides picking mentality. Like you either have to be team Apple Silicon Mac or you can be team x86 PC. But I don't think that that's a realistic choice to have to make. I think it's kind of silly to be like, you can have one but not the other. You can either edit in Final Cut Pro or you can play PC games and you can't do both. I do both. And so I refuse to choose. I'm not just going to get rid of everything with x86 in it because Apple Silicon is good. They can both have their own use cases. And this is the cheapest way to get both. You could have a Mac mini and this and still spend less than like a thousand bucks. So with that, let me know in the comments below what you would do with a $256 PC. Let me know if you think that this is a valid comparison or if you think that this is all stupid and a waste of time. And as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.